So the first part of the video, I will uh, tell you everything you need to do to get the scene that I used in this image. So first go to kibesh3d.com. We'll go and look for Neo City. All right, <clears throat> it's zero dollars for free. So uh, do individual if you're, you know, just doing it for yourself. Choose your software. I'm using Blender uh, because it's free. Uh, <clears throat> so, and then add to cart. Uh, you might need to make a login and like uh, an account and everything, but uh, it's pretty simple and it's free. All right, so once you download that, you go into your downloads and extract the file wherever you want to. And then once you extract the file, there'll be this blender file, uh, Neo cities native. <clears throat> so double click that and it will open this. So the first thing I'm going to do is press Z and do a material preview. Okay. So the next thing you should do is go to HDRI Haven. So we're going to do polyhaven.com, uh, and just click HDRI. I'm going to go to the search bar and type shoe do shoe do like this is the one that i'm going to use so make sure it's on 4k download that and that will look like this right here it's an exr file and that will be our hdri i'm going to immediately go and put the hdri into um, the shading so i'm going to press the shading tab at the top and i'm going to go to right here go to world all right we're going to go new and I'm going to go edits, preferences, add-ons. And in the add-on, I'm going to go node wrangler. Make sure that node wrangler is checked. You're going to want that. All right, so I'm going to press shift A to add a environment texture. Put the color into the background. I'm going to click this and press uh, control T and it'll put in a mapping and texture coordinate. And that's a node wrangler right there. <clears throat> so now that we have this, I'm going to open here, go to my downloads, shoot to like EXR file, open. All right, so I'm going to go to render to view now. All right, so now we have the HDRI map. And you can see. All right, so a few things that I like to do before uh, anything else is uh, right click and change shortcut. So when I do that, and change shortcut, I'm going to press G, okay? Uh, on the rotation, change shortcut, R for rotate, and on the scale, I'm gonna change it to S. All right, cool, so now once you have that, you can select and just move how you want it, and it'll have these arrows. Another thing that makes things easier is, I'm gonna go to pref preferences, and in the preferences, I'm going to go to the key maps. I'm going to type num pad. Make sure this is on key binding. And then space period. So in the 3D view frame selected, uh, we're going to change this to uh, shift F. So like if I uh, click this and shift F, it'll go to that. Say I want to like see something really tiny. Shift F. Boom, it's right there. All right, uh, the next one's gonna be camera. So I'm gonna go to the name key binding, go camera. Uh, so view, view camera, I'm gonna do on F12 and then align camera to view, I'm gonna do F11, okay? I'm gonna go to key bindings and I'm gonna type in F11. I'm going to delete the F11 and the F12 keys that were there before. Okay. That way I can quickly view the camera and uh, reposition the camera as well. Now we can start on building the scene. So right away, this circle will be where the mesh will be added. So I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to use it S to scale it really high. Uh, that should be fine just make it kind of like that and press G to move it up 
and out here. So now we kind of got this going on. And I'll press in to open this little tab right here, or you can just press this button here. And I'm gonna change the location of it while I'm kind of looking where I want it to be. All right, cool. So now I'm gonna do a texture for it. So I like the texture on this building. So I'm gonna make sure that my plane is selected and I'll go to, I'll go to textures, I'll press plus, and then on this dial right here, I'll go down until I find the texture that I want. There it is, it's concrete B. So I'm gonna duplicate that by pressing uh, shift D and then escape. Then I'm just gonna move that down there as well. All right, now I'm gonna move this building down. Uh, on the location, I will just keep going down until it's down here, there we go. Uh, and then on the Y axis, I'm just gonna bring it out, kind of just put it into place. Uh, kind of same thing with this. Just gonna keep building. And uh, before anything else, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm going to press Shift A to add a camera. And then I'll press F11 to put it right where I'm looking. So I'm just gonna kind of get a better view here and press F11. So I want to be able to see the composition that I'm going for. I'm going to just go right into the resolution here. Uh, I'm gonna do 5,000 by, by 4,000. Now we have the, uh, the size that I want to render out. Okay, so rotation. On the x-axis, I'm just going to put it up like this. And then on the location, I'm going to bring it down. All right. Uh, on the rotation on the y, uh, I'm going to make sure that's at zero. So just straight. And then the z, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to make sure this goes down a little bit more. Think about right here is fine, right? And I'm just going to keep moving stuff around the scene to where it looks a, a bit better. Then I can just select the camera by clicking it and move that as well. Now I'm just gonna select this and move it out here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this and shift F to go in here. And I'm just gonna move this into position right here and just kind of make sure it's on top here. There we go. So I'm gonna look at the camera with F12 pretty decent now for the last piece over here i'm gonna put a couple of these in there as well i'm gonna uh, shift d to duplicate it and escape to put it back and g to just move it and uh, i'm just gonna put this on this side over here all right so for this back one actually going to scale it down a little bit and kind of move it to a better spot. This can go about like this. All right, so I'm going to check the rendered view and I'm going to go into cycles and right away I'm going to do GPU compute. That way it doesn't uh, slow down my CPU. I'm going to go into the render settings and I'm going to go to, to, go to film and check transparent. So now I can't see the HDR map, but it's still uh, lighting the scene. All right, now I'm going to select this building here and I'm going to go to the, the textures and I'm going to look at the lights A. Uh, emission strength, I'm going to put at 20 to see what that looks like. Okay, that makes it a lot brighter on the lights. Okay, I'm going to go over here to this sign and light red. I'm going to also increase the emission strength to 20 as well. That way we got some lights going on here. I'm going to make the, the clouds. I'll go to the shading tab at the top. I'm going to shift A to add a cube. So I added a cube. I'm going to make it really, really big. And I'm going to make it a little bit like this and long. And just kind of move this to fill the scene. On this, I'll press the object 
right here. So I'm uh, shading the this the object. Okay, I'm gonna go new. All right, so I'm gonna delete the principal BSDF right away with the X, and then Shift A to add a volume, principled volume. All right, so if I go to render view, it will be completely black because it's in server. So we want that on volume. Now we got a volume inside here. All right, you can just reduce the density in here. So if I go 0 0.007, it'll be a lot less dense. And if we look inside, we got some atmosphere going on. But I'm going to take it a bit further. So I'm going to add a color ramp. So I'm going to go to the density on this. And now we can play with density like this. Okay. We zoom out a little bit. We can see it. All right, so uh, next I'm going to put in a uh, noise texture and put that into the fact have some waves going on in here and I will do a coordinate. So uh, with the node wrangler, I can just control T and that will go in there. And I'm going to make sure the object goes into the vector on the texture coordinate back here. Uh, now I'm going to add a mix. Mix. And that will go into the first one. And below this, I'll add a gradient texture. I'll go into the second one. So um, I'm going to put the vector in the gradient texture. And on the y axis, I'll put 90. All right. So now it's going up and down. So we want negative 90. Negative 90. Now it'll go up and down. And I'll just continue to play with it until I feel like looks good in the scene and you can play with the scale kind of make it smaller or bigger you can just kind of play with it until it looks good all right so now we got the atmosphere going on and everything's looking good we're gonna add some lighting into the scene as well all right so i'm gonna go back to layout and i'm gonna keep it in this view so i can kind of see what the lights are doing so shift a and light i'm gonna add a, a few point lights all right i'm just gonna put the light kind of below the scene a little bit i'm gonna make it 5000 watts and uh, the radius i'm gonna put at five meters all right so uh i'm gonna select this color and just select kind of a blue color I'm going to do 0 0.619 for that one and 0 0.832 for the saturation. So now we got a cool light going on on the bottom here. So I'm going to press this button and I'm just going to make the starting point there. So uh, shift A to do another point to light and just kind of move this around until i think it looks good or and it's inside the building and on this one i'm going to do i'm going to do 200 watts with a radius of five and on the color i'm going to make sure the velocity is at two so it's kind of glowing a lot more uh the saturation is going to be at 0.8 three one and the hue will be at 0 0.619 all right so we've got a good blue color going on over there i'm going to duplicate this press d shift d and duplicate it escape press g to move it to this other side all right and on this one it's going to stay the same except on the hue it's going to be 0 0.030 and on the saturation, we're going to do 0 0.967. Now we have some cool glows going off on the side here. And we're going to add a new light. So shift A for a spotlight. All right, so on these uh, spotlights, we're going to do 10,000 watts and a radius of 3.62. Going to move this down here. And at this point, I'm going to go into a solid 
layer so I can uh, move it around easier. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that this is going like right on here. So I don't need two for this because well, redundant. I don't really need it. Um, you can like kind of get the point with it. Uh, and I'm just going to duplicate with that with the shift D and move it into place like that. All right. So now I'm going to go back into the, my rendered view. Now we got our scene going. All right. So these red lights are not strong enough in my opinion. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make sure the red light is selected. The emission, I'm going to go ahead and just go to 90. That way it's really, uh, really glowing. And uh, you can just kind of move the camera wherever you want to. You can kind of just kind of get, get a view, good view of it. Press uh, F11. Change the composition as much as you want to. All right. Um, so now that we have our composition going and we want to render, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the uh, render pro properties. I'm going to go to color management and I'm going to make sure this is on very high contrast. I'm actually going to go just to high contrast and that'll give it a lot of depth in the render. Uh, it looks really good. On the next part, I'm going to make sure that the render samples, which is going to do a thousand, and that way there, there won't be any noise in the image. It gets really noisy with these lights and the shadows and the atmosphere as well. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that uh, the output is a PNG RBGA. So that's RBG alpha. That means that it will be a PNG cutout of what we see here. So there won't be any background. And you can save that directly to a folder that you'd like it to be saved. Make sure the compression is at 100%, color depth 8, and you should be good. Yeah. Okay, so in post-processing, uh, unclick compositing and sequ sequencer because we're not going to do any compositing in the post process. All right. So now you can uh, render your your scene. You just go up to a render, render image, and it will render out that image. And when you're done, you just go uh, image, save as, and then you can save it to your computer.